Hello, welcome to another Prismian Fibre Optic how-to video. My name's Sandy Many, and today I'm going to show you how to install an oval port kit into one of the small joint closures, either the CMJ or the MMJ. This is the kit that we're going to use and we're going to install it onto a Prismian 144 fiber smart core cable and it has a diameter range nominally of 13.6 millimeters. This particular kit will cover cables in the diameter range 13.1 to 14.8 millimeters. There are other kits in the range that go down as low as five millimeters. Now normally you'd use an oval port if you wanted to loop the cable in and out of the closure to, to branch off some fibers. But you could also use it if you'd run out of circular ports to bring in two separate cables into the, into the closure. But you do need to make sure that the two cables that you're bringing in through the gland kit are the same diameter, otherwise it won't seal properly. Anyway, look, we'll head on out to the workshop and uh, I'll show you how to fit this onto some 144 fiber smart core cable. I'm now gonna show you how to install an oval port gland onto some loose tube cable. So the oval port gland is usually used when you don't wanna cut the cable, when you just want to loop the cable in and out of the joint without cutting it. I've already gone ahead and prepared the cable so I've stripped back 2.7 meters of sheath from this cable and I've cut the, the glass fiber strength member. So I left about 40 millimeters protruding at the end here and I've cut back so there's about 20 millimeters that's had the uh, over jacket stripped back as well so that we can grip down onto the actual GRP itself. And I've done that at both ends. So what we'll do now is I'll show you how to start installing this gland kit onto the cable. I've laid out all the parts here so that you can see what's in the gland kit. So we've got the rubber seal itself and notice it's split and it's important which way around these splits go. There's a compression plate, this stainless steel compression plate here that the screws fit into. And then there's this part at the bottom that compresses the gland along with this compression plate. This is the uh, GRP anchor and it fits up inside the base of the joint closure. So to assemble this, we start with this plastic side of the compression plate and we slide it onto the cable. Note that this part goes down back towards the cable, away from the joint. So we just put this over here and we slide it down the cable a little bit. The next thing we do is we fit the rubber gland, but you see the cutouts in here. There's one here and one on the other side. The cutouts, the splits in here need to be opposite those. So we've got a cutout here on the right at the top. So this needs to go down like that. So it's opposite. And then similarly, this, aluminum, this stainless steel plate needs to be opposite as well, the, the slits in this rubber bung. So they go that way like that. Okay, so that's it partially assembled. And then we need to put the screws in. We don't do them up very tight. We just put them in to hold the whole thing together. And we just screw them up a little bit. And you need to be finger tight really just to keep it together as I said. Now that we've assembled the gland, we need to prepare the base of the closure to accept the gland. And I've just put a CMJ or MMJ base into a work stand here. Hopefully you can see this part here is the oval port entry. And we've actually got to knock this out to make room for the gland to go in. Now, what I have also done is turning this over. Uh, I've removed the, the tray assembly here just to give me room to knock this out and so that you can see what I'm doing. So to knock the, the port, the blank, the port blanking plug out goes out from the inside. We simply use a screwdriver and a hammer and we just knock it out. Now you just need to make sure that all the bits are out and that the, the 
interior surface is nice and smooth. So I'll turn it back over and see what we've got. Yeah, just pick a few of these pieces off. There's a little bit of a dag just there and I would just use a file just on the inside just to make sure that it's nice and clean. Yeah, and that's good. Now that we're happy that the oval port entry is nice and clean, we'll start to feed the cable and the gland into the base. And to do that, we simply feed the, the tubes up through the base. And then we push the gland into the base all the way in so that the, the flange, the plastic flange, is flush with the, the port entry. Then we need to just pull the cable through a little bit to give us some room because we've got to fit now the GRP anchoring plate. I'm just going to turn this round a little bit. Hopefully you can see it a bit better like that. I'll try and keep my head out of it. So what we need to do is to fit this onto the GRPs. And we need to make sure that the end of the GRP is about 15 mil, can't see it there. The end of the GRP is about 15 millimeters beyond the center of these grub screws. So I'll just do the first one. I'm just pulling the tubes aside to give me room. And that's, that's 15 millimeters. And then we do the second one. And again, I'm just trying to push the tubes to one side to give me room to get them in. And again, that's 15 millimeters. So hopefully you can just see here how that's been done. Then we need to get some silicon grease and the sachet comes in the kit. And we just put a little bit on the sheath of the cable here, not too much, but just enough to give it some lubrication so that we can easily pull it back through the gland and we can lock this anchoring plate into place. So we just pull on the cable. Oh, I've pulled the, I've pulled the gland out. I should have held it a bit better. And then there are a couple of dovetails here molded into the base and this anchoring plate has to just fit over those dovetails. And once you get it in place, you'll hear it click into place and it's important that you hear that. That was it then. Okay, that's that part done. Now what we need to do is to just tighten up the screws to compress the gland. And then finally, we need to just make sure they're fully tight with a torque wrench. So I'll start by just tightening them up. And I just use this screwdriver. It's a, it's a ball ended five millimeter hex screwdriver. It's a pretty handy thing for doing this. So just tighten, and you have to tighten the screws evenly so that we get even compression on both sides. And we actually tighten quite a lot, to be honest. When I think we're getting close, I'll stop and go and get the torque wrench. And I think we're getting close now. Okay, so I'm just going to stop for a moment and I'll go and get the torque wrench. So here I have a torque wrench. This is the sort of thing that you can buy at most hardware stores. Uh, it wasn't particularly expensive. The torque required is 3.5 Newton meters and I've set this already to 3.5 and I've got the hex bit in the torque wrench. So I'm now again going to carry on tightening these up evenly. 
It's important that we do that evenly. And as I said before, I had a bit to go, obviously. It's important that you do it all the way. That was that one. And that was that one. So I now know that these are fully tight and I'm happy with that. So the very last step here is to just put a cable tie around these two here, just to give them a bit more, a bit more uh, resistance. So I'm just tightening the cable tie up as much as I can. That's it. And then I've got my cutters and I just cut the end off. And that's nice and secure and there's no way that's going to leak. Now just the very final part is, I'll just turn it slightly there, is that we need to fit the trays back on. And the trays just go in here and you can see they've got some uh, captive thread, threaded bushes here and they just go into there. So it's pretty easy. That's done. So finally, we can then just route the tubes up through these manifolds here and into the accumulation area. And it just depends how you want to configure in this accumulation area. This is quite a large cable for this small joint, to be honest, but uh, it will give you an idea of how you would do it. Probably the MMJ joint would be better sized for this particular cable. And that really completes everything.